In this video I show you how to remove a failed rear shock absorber strut from a Skoda Fabia Mark 1 99 to 2007. So I'll see you after this short break. First thing you want to do is find level firm ground and put the handbrake on, then chuck the wheels both sides at the front, then locate the indented mark close to the rear wheel arch and place your jack on the actual seam just slightly underneath that and wind up the jack until it's firmly in place. Then break loose all the wheel nuts and re-tighten them so they're just nipped up for when you take them off completely. And then jack up the car with the wheel off the ground by about 2 inches. And put your axle stand in to make the car secure. But don't place it on any moving parts like the axle or the um, suspension arm. As we'll need this to move freely when we come to install the strut. Now go ahead and take the remaining wheel bolts out. Take the wheel off and put it underneath the car for extra security. Once you've got the wheel off and supported, you can have a look at the uh, suspension strut. Now, very often they, you can find with the fail, they leak oil and you can get oil coming down here. And there's obviously oil been leaking on here because it's congealed on here and it's dripping down there. Yeah. So that's failed. So to get the strut off, it's located at the bottom, down there. A straightforward bolt, I think it's something like a 17 or 19. I'll have a look when I get to it. And then we've got this, to take the top part of this suspension strut off, we can't get at it because of this cover, this inner cover. So this has to come off first and it's attached by some uh, T25 screws and there's a bit of muck, i to get rid of all the muck first there's one in there there's one there there's two two there there's one here and there's there's one here one here one here and two more at the top of the wheel arch which are out of sight here and face inwards towards the car and here probably a good idea to spray the screws with penetrating fluid and then clean out the star recess with a sharp point of some kind then take out all the screws Once you've done that, it's just a question of waggling the plastic panel loose a little bit, pulling gently down, split where the strut goes to allow you to bend it around that so you can remove it. Put the plastic arch to one side and then reach up at the top of the strut and pull the bump stop down which should just slide out easily. If we look up into the arch, we can now see the strut mount and the two bolts that you need to remove. These are 16 millimeter bolts and you'll need a socket wrench with a long extension on it just to make it that little bit easier. Now it doesn't matter whether you take these bolts out at the top first or you take the bolt out at the bottom. But what you must do is put a small jack underneath the trailing arm and just jack it up slightly just to take off the pressure as when you release the bolts the trailing arm would, would drop down and possibly risk knocking the car off the jack. In any case you will need the jack to install the new strut and you'll see how that works uh, later on in the video. And now we've just got to undo the bottom bolt which in this case is a 17mm wrench and a ring spanner on the nut. Make sure you put some penetrating fluid on this as these very often corrode quite badly. Now take the strut away from the car and you have to take the strut mount off at the top to use on the new strut. Now prise off the plastic top cap with a flat bladed screwdriver and if we look at the strut mount end we can see a nut holding the piston shaft which has to be removed without the shaft rotating. 
and I find it easier to hold the mount in a, a vise with the body supported. For more control, I find the vise is just the right height. But be careful not to over tighten the vise on the mount and damage it, as you're only holding it in place. And if you're worried about it, just put some wood between the jaws to protect the mount. As the nut is recessed into the housing, the best thing to use here is a 17mm swan neck ring spanner. And then grip the threaded strut with an adjustable spanner as you unfasten the nut. Remove the nut and slide out the strut. If we look at the end of the shaft, we can see the two flats that hold the rod in place when you tighten the nut. And further down the shaft, you can see the tiny snap ring collet that fits into a shoulder in the housing. If we look inside the housing, we can see where the piston rod fits and the bump stop seats which is a little bit corroded, which I'll, I'll clean up. But you want to be fitting the bump stop dry, so it eliminates any chance of the bump stop falling down the shaft. One thing that's quite common is the bump stop breaks where it joins against this plastic cover that protects the shaft from corrosion. This one's okay, so I just need to refit that. Take the new shock absorber out of the box and it's always a good practice to marry up with the old original shock absorber to make sure all the dimensions are the same. As with this bottom pivot bush, it is a different style but the width is exactly the same. So that should work in the same way without any problem. Slip the bump stop over the shaft before putting the top housing over the piston rod and assemble with the newly supplied lock nut which I've again set in the vise to make it easier to assemble and keeping the body of the shock absorber free to move about with the body supported. We can tighten the top nut to the specified torque which for this particular car I'll leave in the description but always check against your own car specification. Once you've torqued down the top nut, replace the plastic cover and return the shock to the car. In this case I'm replacing the bottom mount first with a new bolt. So I just need to clean out the inside of the housing and then lubricate it with a little bit of grease. Which I'll put on the shaft of the bolt as well. Put the shock in place and locate and install the new bolt and torque up to the correct specification then put in the top mount in place we need to just slowly jack up the trailing arm until it gets close to the bolt holes and then insert the bolts and uh, tighten the bolts up to the correct torque and we're done. All we need to do now is just lower the bottle jack down and take that away. But first I'd recommend cleaning the plastic inner lining. Once you've cleaned the liner then you've got to hook it over the disc here but there's a split where the suspension strut goes. If you just put that over there, it stretches pretty well. And you just uh, put it either side of the, the strut. That's that. And then you just have to lift it up in place. And it just goes up nicely. Like that. There, sort of. What I usually do, put a bit of copper ease on all the screws. It just helps. You get them off the next time. And there we have it, all put back together nicely with a brand new shock absorber. All I've got to do now is put the wheel back on and take the axle stand out, torque up the wheel bolts. Now all you've got to do is replace the shock on the other side, as these must always be replaced in pairs. And away we go. And thank you for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, it really helps me out with the channel. I really appreciate that. And don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.